Hey, welcome in. This is going to be a lecture for week 16 for your first draft and for your final exam, which is your second draft of your portfolio. So welcome in. This is this is it. It's the culmination. I'm uh, just really pleased to see the great work that everybody has been producing. And um, now it's time to put it all together. And so you'll see that um, our portfolio is not just a compilation where you just print out everything that you've done so far. You have to reorganize it, and you're going to reorganize it by student learning outcome. We've got a, um, uh, an assignment guide that explains how to do that in pretty good detail. We have a portfolio template, and this week um, I, I will have... Um, it's a pretty large, not large, but um, um, uh, it, it's a good set of videos, and then this video will be added to it. There is a discussion this week and for finals week, and you'll notice that um, for turning in your first draft, there is no place to put files because your files are all done. Uh, I'm not expecting you to be doing any new drawings just presentation so why do we focus on the presentation so much i think your discussion activity will identify that pretty well so let's go to it um it's great to have taken classes everybody likes to see um certificates and degrees when you're putting your uh application in uh, especially if it's like indeed.com or one of those online versions, lynda.com, or what is it now, LinkedIn. Um, but at some point, you got to prove it. Everything looks great on paper. I had a guy apply for a mechanical engineering position. He said he was a surface engineer, and I knew something was up there. Uh, it turns out that this surface engineer was a janitor. Um, now, that doesn't mean that, that the person didn't have the skills. It turns out that, that they did not have the skills um, but at some point you got to prove it and you're going to prove it in two ways one if you make it past all of the HR filters and you've met all the requirements you'll hopefully be called for an interview and at the interview if you um, make past the first hurdle on that you'll be asked for maybe a second interview and that's where you're going to prove it Everything sounds good, but uh, before somebody hires you, you're going to have to prove it. The first layer of proof is your portfolio. And the second layer of proof is sitting down at a computer and doing a task that's assigned to you on the computer. So you want to get to that point, and you need proof. And your portfolio is your best proof. And not only that, your portfolio... Well, you have to answer questions, and if you're not really, it's hard to answer questions on the fly. You don't know what the questions are going to be. The best thing to do is know your portfolio back and forth and then show examples rather than tell people stuff that rambles on and goes all over the place and maybe gets it or maybe it doesn't. Make a quick list for yourself of what you need to show and show it in your portfolio okay and rather than say well i did this and i did that 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 uh, the best words are things like let me show you here look at this it's where i did something here is an example of in this project i and you can also see if you can do that you will have interest and you'll be sharp and you'll stay on task and you don't have to make stuff up you just get to point <laughs> right and then they'll be able to see it so so these portfolios are pretty pretty important um, more important than this portfolio in, in itself is the information that it conveys and uh, you'll see here that you may even um, 
look back at other work or you might combine pages of portfolios together for a portfolio that is specific to one job application. Applying for jobs is hard work. Um, it it's I always thought it was pretty stressful. Um, but the preparation pays off. Uh, getting getting ready, <laughs> and so um, you want this in a really well organized fashion so that you can go back and get it later on. So this discussion. The other thing is, it's great to think about it. It's great to sort of write things down. But at some point, you're going to be answering questions, either on Zoom or hopefully in person or um, through a video. And practice makes better. So there's, it's really good to practice here where everybody is helpful and gracious and willing to let you practice. It takes practice. So make a video of yourself. Um, you can make videos just from Windows or from um, from your Chromebook, from a Mac. You can use PowerPoint. You can use Canvas Studio. You can use OBS. Or you can even do it on your phone. That's a little bit harder. Um, but this is a, a, a skill that you really should be trying to get to. Uh, making good videos that you can work with. Another great way is to use um, a little animation program called Viand. And uh, it's a great intermediate way. You don't have to have the camera on yourself. It's a little, little animated character, as you've seen me do in my videos. And uh, you can make up to, I think, a two-minute video free. And so if you're interested, start working on that. At this point, it's, uh, it's up to you. Figure out a way that you've got the technology for and the skills to do and make a video of yourself. No, you know, or, or make a video of you explaining. You can be showing things and talking over the video if you want. And these would be some typical questions, and I just picked some questions that that I have asked in interviews and I've seen asked in interviews and I know that are asked. Um, uh, you might be, and, and I'm putting SketchUp in here just as, a, as something we worked with. It could be any software. Are you familiar with using SketchUp to make a client presentation? And if you go, yep. And then there's a whole bunch of silence. That's not going to get you very far in an interview. Um, you would want to go, yes, let me show you. Here, look at this. It's where I, and in this project, I. Okay. <laughs> so stretch this out to about 30 seconds to a minute of showing things. Might go, how's your rabbit skills? Oh, pretty good. That won't get you very far either. Okay. Rather than saying, oh, they're good or they're this, because you don't know what they think is good or excellent or are you fast. Okay. You would say, well, let me show you and you can decide. That's a great way to do it. Let me show you, then you can decide and you can show some work in Revit. And you could even say, now this is what I've done in my first introductory class. You can see what I was able to do right when I started. And then if you've done more classes, you can say, and look at me now. This is six months later, and look at how much more I can do. That's really powerful. And employers love it when you don't answer a question that says, hey, I'm a fast learner. Uh, you show that you're a fast learner, and all of you are. <laughs> it's amazing what you've been able to do in the short time of this class. Um, our employers that are asking for, for recommendations are always just amazed at how much uh, you can get done. Okay? 
So, uh, so that's, that's what our uh, discussion is about, is to give you practice, and it gives you a little bit of information as to why we put so much emphasis on having a portfolio. So um, um, the assignment guide has a bunch of videos in it that describe how to get that done. I don't need to go over that with you. Um, for the week 16 submittal is portfolio first draft, first draft only. And there will be no grade assigned at this time. Okay. Um, it's a first draft and that's cool. I will give you later on um, the same grade in this spot as I give you for your final portfolio. So you get the best of both worlds. You get to turn something in. You get to get feedback of it if you turn it in on time. And I'd give a lot more feedback on portfolio drafts than I do during the whole rest of the semester. Because uh, this is going to be, you know, this is the last shot. And you really want to get this as, as good as you can get. Uh, so I will provide detailed feedback for possible improvements. Now, you might look at it and go, oh, man, I am so done. I ain't doing any of those. Um, but there will be no grade assigned at this time. You'll get feedback. And then when I've graded the final exam, which is your final uh, portfolio, I'll just pop that grade into this week 16 grade. Now you'll notice again that, and I'll repeat it, there is no uh, module for drawing and file submittal because that's done. Um, if you're coming in and you're getting lots of drawings done because you need them, that's okay. And you can always turn in files to late work. Um, it says technically that I don't accept late work during finals. I do, you know. <laughs> uh, I put that down there so that um, somebody can't just like not do the whole class and try to turn everything in on finals. That is not the case for anybody in this class. So um, I will accept your late work up until the end. I do not grade any late work if it does not make a difference to your grade. So if you've already gotten an A in the class, don't expect me to, and you've got a 90% or something like that, don't expect me to grade late work because you want to get more points. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. Um, however, if you're kind of hovering uh, at the borderline between a B and an A, and uh, you'll go up a grade, I'll definitely grade everything and give you as many points as I possibly can uh, because I, I understand, you know, your grades matter to you. Now, believe it or not, your grades do not matter one bit to um, employers. They do look at transcripts to see if you um, have a ton of withdrawals or a ton of repeats. They'll question you why. And so just be, be you know, be honest. I said, well, shoot, you know, uh, during COVID, I had to withdraw from a bunch of classes because. Or, well, you know, it was all going great. Uh, but I find that I have to work a lot. And every now and then I took too much. Just be honest with it. Um, most employers understand that life happens also. And um, if you can... Uh, show an employer that you persevere and you stay with it even when uh, you get thrown a curveball and and get a couple of swing and misses that speaks a lot I always uh, when I was interviewing liked to hear about people that uh, were able to overcome problems and not um, not give up uh, so that's a that's a really good thing so anyway uh, nobody cares about the grade you got in this class. They care about your portfolio and sitting you down and having you draw. So there we go. That's what's up for this week. It's week 16. Remember, it's a short week. The 11th at midnight. 11.59 p.m. actually. 
um, is is the cutoff date. Anything that's turned in before then, I will uh, look over and get done. I'll spend, you know, the 12th, the 13th, the 14th, and the 15th getting most of your late work done. I'll do these portfolio submittals first. Then I'll start working on late work. And so by Monday of next week, you should have pretty good feedback so that you can turn in your final portfolio. And it doesn't show that it's due here, but but uh, maybe I'll put a due date on here. Um, but your final final portfolio will be due anytime during the final exam week, which is up to 11.59 p.m. on Wednesday the 18th. In jet now our grades aren't due until like June 1st or something like that. In general, I try to get my grading done on the Thursday and the Friday after um, after finals are done. So I don't know what the turnaround time in e-services once I do that. Um, so please, you know, be 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 aware that that I am going to be grading here and here. So do get all of your work, all of your late work in up into here so I can make any adjustments that are needed. So, uh, so there we go. That's that's the the last lecture you're going to get in Design 320, spring of 2022. I want to thank each and every one of you for being part of the class. Um, I would have enjoyed meeting you where, whenever possible. We are really trying to move more towards back in-person teaching. Uh, it will increase in the fall and increase even more in the spring. Uh, we're still cognizant that many people have needs for online teaching, so we're going to be meeting their needs too. But, um, you know, it was a pleasure working with you. For those of you who came to the open lab in Kumo space, I enjoyed working with you there. And as always, I'm really impressed seeing the good work that our students at American River College do. And I want to encourage you to... Um, Keep up your studies in design technology. If you have any questions about what to take next, feel free to contact me. I will be um, answering emails, like I said, through, uh, through this 19th and 20th. I also am teaching a summer school class starting June 6th for six weeks. Uh, in between the 20th and June 6th, I'm pretty much radio silent. I won't be answering questions or emails. But uh, starting on the 6th, I'll be answering them through the middle of July. Then I'll be radio silent for another couple of weeks again and be starting um, answering things again in the second to third week of August. So there we go. Enjoy. Thank you for your great work, and I look forward to seeing you in future classes in design technology.